ahead and go live now. Live, you say? <clears throat> mm, yes, I've hit it. With with the YouTubes? Yes. What what about the the Discord? Are we live on Discord? No, because Discord sucks. What about Facebook? We're we live on Facebook. No. Oh. Just YouTube. You'll be happy with that. Now, are you telling me that then, by 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 extrapolation, that YouTube, our YouTube audience, is our best and most amazing audience? Uh, obviously, yes. Which means everyone amazing. here right now is therefore the best and most amazing people in the Trekkiars community. Is that is that mm -hmm. what you're saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See, I turned it around from complete nonsense to very complimentary. Mm. Mm. There you go. Thanks. Welcome back, guys. Talking about starships today. Well, a starship, the Obina class, otherwise known as the USS Archimedes. Yes. We've done, done a lot of videos, our first look video, our full breakdown video, and our interior of the ship yes. video. Uh, so there's lots of stuff for you guys to go watch if you haven't. Those are very well done and put together, and Sam did an awesome job. But today we're going to be talking about mm. it with you guys, because you guys kind of steer the conversation. You have ideas and things that we might not think of, so we love to do that with you guys. So. Well, and not just that, but obviously I edit out all of Stuart's best points, so you finally get to hear the unedited Stuart. Yeah. I'm obviously joking. Uh, <laughs> but yes, the first look, nice, and, and, those, and those are fun because we do film them in the order we shoot that sort of video, so... We make interesting assumptions and deductions, which then, in the second video, we then really like. Here we are, and we have the, all all the extra information and, and look at. And there was a lot of surprising stuff that our gut reaction said one thing, but it's the sort of ship where it's not what you think. And I've, I've seen a lot of comments just complaining, well, noting, well, saying <laughs> that it's just this or this. And obviously, as we know, the uh, the reality is far different. But it's kind of hard to reflect that the whole time. Mm -hmm. So hopefully people will watch these videos and enjoy. <clears throat> but yeah, yeah it'll be a nice companion piece to the edited ones for sure in the future. For in the future, so. And the last time we did a thing like this, and then for the record, it, it's not the most like intricate <coughs> of the universe. It's just because they showed every angle pretty much. They gave us a lot of those angles to compare. The mm -hmm. last time we did something like this, where we did a first reaction breakdown and a live was actually the Discovery A, which had such an amazing reaction from you guys. It was just you guys absolutely blew blew the doors down um and said hey there good job on that so uh mm -hmm. you know we thought we'd do it for this one as well i think overall people are liking the ship so uh here to talk about it yes indeedy I guess I'll so guys, Sharon. yes <clears throat> hit that like button we have 60 people here 37 likes already that is amazing uh as are you guys but hit that like button. If you want a super chat, please feel free. We'd really appreciate it. It does help us out quite a bit. And uh, we want to hear your thoughts and things like that. So if you can, please super chat so that we do read them. We do see them. Um, if you do want to send a PayPal, you can do that as well. Just let us know in the regular chat that you sent a PayPal to trekyards at hotmail.com. And we will very happily read your comment or question via the email uh, from PayPal. So that's another option. Uh, you can join the channel. At, obviously, there's a couple different ranks there you can select. Uh, that's a monthly subscription kind of thing, but, you know, a couple bucks a month adds up, and it all makes a big difference, especially to the YouTube algorithm and things like that. So if you can join the channel or consider joining the channel, we'd also really appreciate that as well. So click that Join button. Honestly, make uh, obviously, I mean, honestly, obviously, make sure you're subscribed to the channel as well. And by all means, click that notification bell icon to all. Also, there's links down below to the T Spring and the T Public stores. So if you can buy, uh, want to go check out some merchandise, Truck Yards merch, go do that. Um, yeah. Uh, Kevin Van Dahl, I missed the torpedo tubes. Um, well, if you're talking about the ones in the neck, those aren't actually torpedo tubes on the Excelsior. The, the torpedo tubes are the lower ones on the secondary hull. But, yeah, I don't really know photon torpedo tubes on the Archimedes Bell looks of it, which is odd. 
They definitely should be. But uh, good news is we are talking to Mike McMahon and two other people, the lead produ- uh, production guy and uh, somebody else tomorrow. I've got an hour-long interview with them where we're going to be talking about ships and a whole bunch of cool stuff from Lower Decks. And then we'll be editing those into videos for release down the road. So that is tomorrow's kind of afternoon project. Uh, that's one of the reasons I don't think we'll be doing a live tomorrow afternoon because it's like 3.30 Eastern Standard Time that we'll be talking to Mike McMahon and company. And um, that's pretty awesome. So just be excited for those. We're going to ask all the relative questions, anything you guys want to know, by all means, super chat us a question. Uh, We'll see if we can get it uh, answered by Mike McMahon. There it is. <clears throat> yes, replace it. All right. So here comes Samuel back. So, yeah, guys, make sure you do what you're supposed to do. Do your job. Like that video. Do all that cool stuff. So, Sergeant Mungo, <laughs> ask about the navigation lights, please. Yes, we will. When we talk to Mike McMahon, we'll ask about navigation lights in, in Lower Decks Universe. So definitely wait to hear when, but uh, once that's confirmed, that'll be nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. Ah, I guess I'll start with the poll then, Stuart. Sure, pull it up. Guys, hit that like button. We got 77 people. Let's aim for 75 likes. We're at 53 right now, so it should be very doable. And always looking forward to hearing what you guys think or are thinking or what's on your mind. All that jazz. So super chat away. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, yes, yeah, so we got some good comparison shots and stuff that was in our edited breakdown video. So we will be looking at those as well. And uh, if anything sticks out to you guys that we didn't notice or we didn't talk about, we want to hear you. We want to hear from you guys because you guys kind of steer the conversation. So that's the point. Yeah. So a lot of comments, obviously, we were hearing is it is just uh, it's not as exciting as as it could be, and kind of a uh, why couldn't they design something actually new? And it's just such mm. an optical illusion ship. It really is. Mm-hmm. So even in just this first this thumbnail view. I mean, the colors are so different. The the angles you can see there's a lot of differences. Like it's reminiscent, and it kind of looks like a, a cheap, you know, a cheap cartoon version of the other one being high detail and high textured. You know, it looks more like a thing you expect to see, and it you know, like if you're doing a comedy Excelsior, you know, like just this view, mm-hmm. everything's kind of out of proportion, and therefore clearly not the same thing, not identical anyway. Mm-hmm. Love to get a 3D model of the Archimedes built. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. <laughs> That's the advantage of low deck stuff. There isn't that many details. I mean, where's the RCS thrusters, etc., etc. Well, they'd naturally be where they should be and on then, the Enterprise do you ESOS. Do or... them if yes, they're not on the other model? Yes, But then how do you scale them? Because if the ship's bigger, then you make them bigger. <clears throat> That's the problem. Once you start adding details to these things, and then we would then do a comparison saying, look at the detail. And it's, it's, yeah, this was a slippery slope with taking cartoon ones. That's mm. why it's nicely the... Nicely, the fan film ones, because then you can kind of say, aha, well, I'll extrapolate this, and then it doesn't matter if it matches because it's a fictitious one, etc. And Ozzy throws in $2. Does it have a rubber ducky room? Probably. Apparently, it's a staple. So, I did start with a radical poll just because I wanted to. I know that. Oh, God, what? Which of the shows was it where. There was two ships introduced and everyone liked the other ship. Oh, it was Vancouver, yeah. And Vancouver was released in Lower Decks. People said, that should have been the Cerritos. Right? That was pretty much universally said. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. So I thought, let's go with this. Parliament one. class. Parliament class. So do you prefer the Cerritos or the Archimedes design? 78% Archimedes. Oof. Let's see how that voting goes a little bit later. Just to start off anyway. Well, Archimedes is like the new cool toy on, yeah. you know, so everybody's excited about it. But, uh, 
But yes, there's the first three views, and yes, it does seem to have side impulse engines. <clears throat> yeah, it's such a weird decision. It's had a glow just because. But obviously, when you when they color match the impulse engines and almost placement, it looks like there's five impulse engines, one behind the bridge, one either side of the impulse unit, and then the normal two. So there's five impulse units. Yeah. Might be more. What are the red things on the end of those black stripes on the secondary hull? Yeah, Maybe I those mean, are also. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And also there's... Yeah. Now, I actually wouldn't mind if they were blinkies. Like, rectangle blinkies would be kind of neat, actually. They're not. Mm -hmm. They're on the wrong side. <laughs> but that would have been cool. I don't know what they would be. They're just red glows. But at least the ship did get... Red and green, for the most part, right. Oh, they missed the, they missed the front white glow, which yeah. is odd. <clears throat> Feed me, Seamer says. I don't know how I feel about it, but hurry up, Eagle Moss. I want a model of it. <laughs> yes. Well, that's that's like a year and three quarters away. So, don't do not hold yeah. breath. I don't know about that. I mean, then we kind of got the the stuff from Mike McMahon early because he had season two written at least before. Season one was done, so maybe Eagle Moss has it ready to go, and they're gonna release it in. Oh, so announce it in December. Oh, something. so you think maybe a, a mega delay on that stuff, so they could be a bit more further. But you, just, you assume we do the season one stuff first, and there's plenty of ships in season one, and they are monthly; they're not bi-weekly, and these models don't necessarily translate straight to. You know, they take a lot of process to turn it from this sort of model into a printable. Uh. But I don't know what would you put this over the Packard ship and over the Vancouver and over the. You know, there's so many more sort of iconic ships for the show now. Well, definitely over the Packlet ship. Mm. Yeah. Packlet ship. Yeah, I can. I, I kind of want one, but at the same time, it's like I don't need one. It's just more iconic mm. now as a. It is the, the you know, symbol of death, of stupid death. <clears throat> Mark Lawrence throws in $5. Thank you so much, Mark, Mark Lawrence. I can't choose. I like them both. Well, it's a 51, 49% sort of thing. You know? Mm. Mm. But yeah, what about these views stick out to you? And, and uh, what comments have you heard about this then? Um, I haven't really been reading the comments on it. Um, I just know a lot of people just think it's a Excelsior refit. I disagree, but... Hmm... Uh, yeah, Wraith Bum 78 says the only thing that rubs me the wrong way is the bridge dome. Yeah, the bridge dome is a little bit big, and uh, we talked about that in our video a bit. It's kind of hard to reconcile that unless it's bridges in the middle of the thing and there's stuff around it, maybe. Um, don't know. And Eric the Bat, I can kind of sympathize with this comment. He says, I hate the Excelsior, I like this. I used to dislike this the Excelsior. Uh, but over the last few years, it's kind of grown on me quite a bit. So, but I do prefer this to the Excelsior, honestly. Uh, so. Yeah, I, I much prefer the Excelsior to this. Mm -hmm. Again, it's like you. cartoon version, you know, which it is. <laughs> but I just, mm -hmm. you know, I just started scrolling. Already in the last five hours, there's been two interesting comments on the on the breakdown, which I can bring up. Uh, Sen Stormrunner four hours ago said, "Makes me think of the transformation." Of the original Connie to the refit Connie, this is the original original Excelsior to the refit Excelsior, as in a, a more fund a more larger jump than the to the B, which is a mm -hmm. mi mini, mini refit. I, there's a more direct comparison, like this, this uh, angled struts and stuff for sure. New, totally with new warp nacelles. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I can see the correlation there. <clears throat> um, eh, I still disagree. <laughs> But this is, I think, a unique build. But it's an interesting way of saying that. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Raven de Grey said, The bump in front of the deflector, which we questioned, is the quantum torpedo launcher like Enterprise E. The secondary impulse under the main impulse could be for source separation. As the bridge dome being so big, it does have an impulse drive, so I imagine the bridge is deck one, and the impulse drive is on deck two. Hmm. Hmm. I don't think that bump in the front of the deflector is the quantum torpedo launchers, though. Yeah, it doesn't would... show any kind of details that would show that. Actually, there's no 
torpedo launchers on this thing at all by the looks of it, so. Nope. But I mean, you know, first contact. If a ship's designated, designated first contact, you've already done the work to not need combat. You'd want it to be. But you want you want that on all your ships, though. Even the Cerritos has torpedoes and phasers, just in case they need them, which they often but they do. They didn't in season one have torpedoes, if we if we assume that was actually canon to a refit. Only after they fought the pack because of the up up arm. They didn't have a lower phaser launcher, so they if you take both versions of canon, they doubled the firepower between seasons. Mm. I don't know. What's like the Oberth? Why has the Oberth not got torpedo launchers and phasers? You know, I mean, any any ship of the past that you haven't updated. Why is not every ship got quantum's now? I, mean, I certainly agree it should have torpedoes, but perhaps, you know, if it doesn't have first contact, that's what it's there for. Mm -hmm. 77 likes now, guys. I want to hit the 100 mark now. We have 105 people here, so hit that like button. And, uh, yeah, please uh, super chat your thoughts or ideas. We want to talk about them and kind of figure some things out with this. And Femi Seymour says, their cells are Enterprise E. Not really. I mean, yes, but also not really. They're different I got to say... Feed Me Seymour has been saying a lot, and I don't think he's obviously seen our video that we released today or yesterday. Um, so I'd suggest go look at the full breakdown video. It addresses a lot of things you've been asking about. Probably all of it, um, let's be honest. Yeah, but do a lot. honestly, that's why we're here live as well, to kind of talk about it. So, And obviously, there's all three of them compared. And yes, the e nacelles are inspired, but instantly... I mean, things nacelles are similar to each other, right? The very nature of that... You know the Excelsior to the to the B are different enough to be refit nacelles, but this is you can always see the the E and the whatever ships called nacelles are actually slightly different shaped. They're different, you know. So if you're refitting a cell, well, you wouldn't can't change it that much. It's easier to build a new version. So I took it as this is an earlier version of the nacelle, mm -hmm. slightly less sleek, less advanced, and then the E is kind of like a version two, much more, you know, a race car version because this is obviously uh, I would say so obviously a earlier ship build than except than sovereign so it's in that lineage in between it's taking the excelsior lineage and saying hey let's update it but we're not nowhere near sovereign yet which you know fully on well, uses all those elements as you know i disagree with you on that i think the ones on the archimedes look newer and compared to the enterprise e ones i just do but that's okay because us not agreeing is a good thing sometimes they just, they just, I mean, again, it's the limitation of a, of a cartoon. They are more bulky. So is bulky more advanced? That's just, it's also animated. So how would they look if they were fully, fully detailed? But then we've had a bird of prey that's fully detailed. So again, that line I said to you earlier, that line of what's intentional versus what's, what's artistic. It, it, it's tricky on this sort of show. <clears throat> Jacob says, I'm waiting to see what the bottom bay is used for on the arch. Yeah, it, it's definitely a unique look, and it's the same color as the deflector, which is a weird choice. Yeah. Um, and like I said, it looked like a, an auditorium or a cathedral, like, huge window. Oh, de um, there. He likes his cathedrals. Uh, yeah. Well, that ruined it for me. How can we do this? this? Yes. Yes. George says, I don't know why, but from, from the side, the Archimedes does not look good. I know it's the same flat back the Excelsior has, but it just does not work for me. Yep. Uh, the profile is kind of where the ship kind of doesn't quite work for me either, just because I don't like the curve on the front of the secondary hull. I think it needs to be pushed out more at the bottom. It's too... <sighs> yeah, I don't know. But it follows that original excelsior that's that's an early excelsior design concept before they actually can't finish the model obviously it's quite different mm -hmm. but i can see where they kind of got the shapes from yeah so. it was a good shout now i i'm this is actually going to, to stay on for a minute so we have no idea the scaling although they say it's in theory large if you take the window scale but we've already seen on another episode the window scale is not up to par on everything so let me redo this graphic where we compare comparatively scale because if you look at the obviously the, the side view and the, the Enterprise B, you can see the the side grills of the of the saucer. You can see them verbatim on the, the Enterprise B, and you can see the little rectangle RCS, right? So you can see the sort of details it's inspired by. 
should I try and line those up? In which case, it'd be massively smaller. But if sure, this... might as well, might as well give it a try. Or, or you know, or, or should I scale the? Uh... You know what I mean? Like, like, the... or should I try and scale the like point? Because the point of the shuttle bay does look about comparable to the point of the other one. Maybe try that mm. and see how that scales. Like, what should I try and scale it to to try and see, find some sort of what it looks right? The bridge. Oh God! Well, that. Mm. Mm. No, try the shuttle bay to start. Okay. Sleep Paw throws in two dollars. YouTube is misbehaving. Didn't notify of the live. Oh. Well, what a shock. <laughs> yeah. YouTube doesn't like us very much. It's true. Uh, 91 likes, 121 people here, guys. Hit that like button. Let's get to 100 likes. It should yeah. be it should be very easy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. James McGill, two dollars. A sovereign, an Excelsior ship, and it looks great. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, goes back to what Carol Freeman said in the or Captain Freeman said in the end of season one. I hate when the ship goes in for a refit and comes out looking all sovereigny. Yup, <laughs> that was feels extremely apt now. Yeah. Which honestly could be, I mean, well, you know that John Eves, whenever, whenever he designs anything post TNG, is always very sovereign -y. That's kind of the, yeah. he's sort of locked into that. I don't know if that was a reference for a reference. Hell's Rats has scaled in the cells. And but they're totally different the cells, though. Like, they're definitely not Enterprise Ena cells, so. Yeah. Okay, so I've, I mean, if you, the shape of both, and I guess the problem with them taking pictures to build. The shuttle bays line up extremely well in terms of um, shapes. <laughs> mm. Although the E isn't, oh, the problem is the E isn't scaled because I didn't, I didn't think to just scale these. They were more to fill the frame, so I'll just keep it as, keep it as pre-scaled and let's see. And Sci-Fi Nation says I always thought the Excelsior and Sovereign were roughly the same size. No. <laughs> no. I have to load those in separately to, to refine that. Yeah. But there's more um, to that story. Yeah. Okay. All right, we hit 100 likes. Good job, guys. If you if you're just here though and haven't hit that like button, just drop us a like. We'd really appreciate it. All right. So this is if I scaled the shuttle base to the same size, <laughs> which uh, probs ain't it. Which also puts it to, you know into more questions of well, goddamn, how big is it really? So this is the same. Shuttle bay curve. I'm actually fine if it was a smaller vessel. I think it might actually work better, but it definitely wasn't in the show. Yeah, it would work a lot better, especially that bridge module at the top. But so how do you find huh. that then? How do I what? How do you find that then? Find what? The bridge thing, module. One well, of the whole thing. One when you scaled oh. it down to the shuttle size. Oh, I like it. Mm. I think it would work well, actually, mm. but it just seems so massive on screen. I just wish there was something really to compare it to. We have the Cerritos kind of pulling out behind it, but it doesn't really help. So not at all. And even and I'm I... fine with it being a small. It's like it's almost like the uh, the Nova class as far as scaled down size goes compared to some of the bigger ships. Hmm. Okay, so now I'm going to try it compare if I actually scaled those three lines on the saucer mm -hmm. to the same line grooves on the MSD. Okay. And these are all well, rough, but it's still it's still something to to go by. Well, Traver Umber Umberger puts in twenty dollars. So thank you so thank much. Thank you. Boom. Always been a fan of the Excelsior Lakota, and I'm ha loving this post TNG era iteration of the design. Really like the neck bulk they added, and love that they carried over the impulse deck. Thanks for the content, guys. Boom. Yeah, um, I like the neck bulk as well. Uh, that being said, like even the, when we talk about the end of the episode, we see from the side, it's kind of lanky in some views, mm -hmm. but it does seem beefier in other views, so it's kind of a weird one that way. All right, so this, so the left-hand side one is if you if you scale the shuttle base to the same size, the right hand is if you if you if you line up the length of the saucer rings. Hmm. It's a bit smaller. I'd say, again, makes that bridge dome feel a lot more normal. Yeah, that's true. That would that would bridge dome. Oh, that's so weird. Mm. 
Because it doesn't need to be this giant size. It would actually kind of be cool if it was a micro Excelsior. That'd actually be kind of cool. Like cramming the same design but in a smaller package. More advanced, mm -hmm. etc. Hmm. And Dream Restore says, what was that poor question? The Cerritos is a terrible design. Oh. I really don't mind the Cerritos. Yeah, that's, uh, that's sad. <laughs> but everyone thinks the same. It certainly has its charms. Mm -hmm. Now, mm. all the other angles are different, so it's, it's really something impossible to compare yeah. the other stuff. Because, like, like we said, they're all different, so I can't just drop it out. Let me do one as, as a saucer size. As well. And honestly, if you... Well... Never mind. Forget what I was going to say. Okay. Doesn't make sense anyway. Okie dokie. Scars and hands. A Kelly class is a lovely design. Yes. Uh, Bryce says, I like, I've been, it's like I've been telling my friends all week. These two guys from Trek Yard said that the <laughs> Archimedes is exactly the same as the Excelsior. No difference. And those guys know their stuff. Well, if you've been saying that, no wonder we don't have the subscribers we need because people think we're idiots. Because that's not the, at all the case, nor the, is, is that what we said. I think he might be joking, Mr. Just, just. I, I hope so. I hope so, because otherwise... Oh, he's got a winky face afterwards. There you go. All right, so that is... I'm joking, he says. <laughs> so that is it scaled to the saucer size. So like I said, we have shell base size in first, rim size by second, and saucer size by the third. What do you think on that? I think saucer size would probably be more, more of a go-to. Actually, you can't you can't scale the saucer because it's oval. So it's it's going to be different. Yeah, already is. Yeah, that. yeah, it doesn't work. But now I'm interested. Uh, what if I fry minis? puts in two dollars. Oh, scale you. the escape pods or phaser strip girth. Uh, can't really do that from the side. No. Not really an option. And besides, I haven't got escape pods. Don't think I saw. Um, don't remember seeing escape pods. I'm all trying different graphic. You can tell me. Don't necessarily think they do. I can't see any. And their phaser strips are w weird. If they're phaser strips, which they probably are. So let's let's not take that as, as a. <laughs> let's not do that either. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a dark image of it from the top in our video, but that might have some escape pods. I don't think it does, though. I don't think there's enough detail. Yeah. So there's the scale, top oh, the scale the nacelle attachment point. I did think that as well. Yeah, let me try that. So mm -hmm. This is the top view, and uh, yeah, I don't see escape pods. Huh. And also, you have escape pods, and well, I mean, the Excel doesn't have them either, which does, I mean, if anything, that does tell us it's an older design. That we're just refitting the cells because they're all under the hull. Every, everything Enterprise C onwards has exterior in the cells, so exterior escape attaches. So they're actually saying, yes, it must be between this era and this era, which is kind of cool if that's a, a deliberate choice. I don't know if it would be because that's quite a thing to say. Mm. But maybe they're clever people. So let me right, what's that? What's that? And harangue in mind keeps yelling at us to scale the atta attachment points for the nacelle. Does he think yelling will make it go faster? Probably. Most uh, people do. That, that's not how life works. So I did a brief one where I sort of stretched it and I was intrigued. We said this in our previous live or video. This is it sort of stretched out to kind of get a closer look on the on all the other proportions. I think that works. I'm still waiting. Ooh, that I like. That makes more sense. A little bit bigger than the Excelsior makes sense for the time period. Yeah, I like that. It also clearly visible is the uh, nacelle, uh, is the saucer ovalness, if you kind of stretch it a little bit. 
it comes across where the other view doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that actually. I hope they I hope they do have a size and a scale for it. Um, because to just draw something without thinking about it. Maybe we'll find out soon. Hopefully. Just saying. All right, so I've done a scale version with the attachment point, which is pretty interesting, actually. But that also assumes that it's the same hull, which would imply not a fresh build, because why would you build the exact same height, width, whatever? But that's, you know... Mm. So I'm going to do that a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> well, so, okay, I'm going to take this poll down. Sure. And the poll was 73% saying the Archimedes is better than the Cerritos design. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just fair. Mm -hmm. Do a new poll. Oh, Bryce says, I'm going to start an online petition at CBS Paramount Viacom to hire Trek Yards to approve all their ships, old and new, before they're out on the screen. This is confusion what happened again. Oh. Yes. And if you want to get us in the door. So, yeah, here's it scaled with the connection point, which does create other problems, but it's not too far off. They clearly have to then redesign their, their shuttle bay area, but if you're going to have a bigger ship, have a bigger shuttle bay area, that's fine. We know it's already elongated, but everything else is roughly in proportion to the Excelsior. So this would imply to me they were able to keep the, like, they could retrofit primary hulls, or secondary hulls perhaps, and everything else is custom. But that's pretty close, and scale wise, I'm not against that. And the, the Excelsior is very long, so. Would work fine against the Cerritos. Hmm. Oh, it's not gonna work. Shit. Hmm. I'm more curious as to why they decide not to call this an Excelsior refit, why the class name change. Because there already is an Excelsior refit called the Enterprise B. So it would have been yes. an Excelsior refit refit. And at a certain point, how many refits are worth it? It makes more sense to have a it's like you've got the um uh, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It fits for me. Works for me. Plus, it gives them more of its own life, longevity, identity. Just calling it Celsius Refit doesn't really speak to the. Mm -hmm. Doesn't speak to. Plus, it's, it's gonna say, plus it's different enough, really, when you look at the individual components that you can see that it is unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. I think Stuart's doing a poll. Almost done here. Almost done with Who the poll. Who else like is chiming out randomly? I'm not trying randomly. It's Photoshop. I'm trying to do changes. So that's uh, it's Photoshop. Scale looks good, makes sense. The new ship would be bigger. I mean, does it though? You know, the Excelsior was not a. It was advanced for the time, but a lot of that internal volume is the tech needed to power it and fly it. Whereas a ship newer would need a lot less tech to do the same space. So yeah. all the extra room would be needed then for larger crew and larger internal volume for other stuff, but you don't need that. You know, the E actually has a lot. Is a lot. Well, has less internal volume in a lot of ways. So. Newer does not mean bigger. It actually means smaller. Look at the Voyager. The Voyager is far more advanced than the Excelsior, and it's far smaller. It can run circles around it. It's got faster warp. It's got more power. It's got better shields. It's got you know, it's got more more uh, luxurious crew quarters. You know what I mean? So that is not that is not a quite. That's why it's fun to look at class of ship progression. You know, the heavy cruiser lineage because they are seeing how that develops. It's hard to then compare. You know, Defiant to a Galaxy. Well, firepower versus one is, is one thing, but then you look at well. How long can it go in a fight? How big is the warp core, etc. Mm -hmm. But you know, if anything, it should be a smaller ship. I, I, I would, for, I'd love to say it'd be like a third smaller, which is not a lot in the grand scheme. Yeah, uh, Fry Minis, two dollars. Just thank saw you. a long way from home today. Very cool. Oh, thank you. 
Appreciate that. Thanks so much. Okay, just one second. Yeah, and Nikki says, reusing and rebuilding old hulls isn't unknown in the modern cruise industry. Yes, no, fair enough. I mean, these things were a lot of them. I mean, you know, the Enterprise refit itself had lots of reuse, lots of not reuse. It's a confusing everything, so yeah. You'd want to change. I mean, this, if you, the, the secondary hull, I can imagine being more unchanged because the saucer has so much tech in it that's external, and so much living area has been changed. So I can imagine that thing's being completely gutted, and at some point just restart it. Where secondary hull is just a big, it's a big container ship, you know, a big container mm. ship with, yeah, you, know, you just need the bare bones of it. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Harangue in mind throws in five dollars. Thank Thanks you so much. Um, you are smart. You make it go. We try. I mean, that's the plan. Yeah. So what are people? Okay, a... Oh, sorry. I was gonna say we got a new poll question up there. Ooh. Have you guys watched our three other videos on this design that were released over the last three days? You've either seen them all, you saw one, you saw two, or you didn't even know about them. It's gonna be important to know what, who's seeing what, and how many of <sighs> yeah yeah it's going to be important because youtube's a bit of an idiot and they don't notify people of things so yeah pretty much now how have you come out with the the where, where are you now sort of in final with the the reflector there now you've had more time to to let it sink in and what do you guys think are you pro or anti yellow deflector uh I still want a blue, but as I said in the video, I mean, if it's a continuation of the newer uh, Sovereign class deflector, uh, I really don't have an issue with it. I, I think I like that it's brighter than the Sovereigns, but I really prefer the blue mm. deflectors. This makes more sense. Uh -huh. Just because of the past history of deflectors. Uh -huh. <laughs> so... Although, if you think about a ship like this, sort of the three easiest ways of improving the ship would be you replace the old phaser strips with new phaser strips. Now you've got more powerful emitters. Swap out the dish, the deflector, with a new dish that has more output, and just swap out the uh, engines, the warp engine cells. Three of the easiest changes. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then if you can eject a warp core and have a new warp core which is higher end in the same space, there's another one just eject and put a new one in. Boom, you've got four relatively easy changes without too much change to the main hull. This is obviously a bigger change, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Not too tricky. Uh Herring Mine throws another five dollars, so thank, thank you. you. A flagship might need more internal space for transporting or evacuating large numbers of people. It's not really a flagship's job. <laughs> flagship represents the Federation, so uh, but yeah, I mean, all ships have evacuation limits, mm -hmm. just in case, because um, you never know who's the closest to an area that needs it. So yeah, there's always emergency evacuation limits on all ships. But I wouldn't. Not as much as on smaller ships, but. I wouldn't. I mean, Enterprise D is different. It was the it was the, uh, you know, Swiss Army knife of an army knife of all classes. Yes, but it was. You wouldn't expect to send your best ship with the best crew. Oh no, there's a people in dismay 44 light years away. Let's jump there at warp 9. But sir, the negotiations with the powerful race, we need our flagship. No, I have to, to go evacuate people. It's not It's not really, you know, it's not that it's below their pay grade, they'll do it if they need to, but it wouldn't be the first choice. You'd rather send a bigger ship like the Galaxy. There are plenty of bigger ships than the flagship of any given era. The flagship is advanced. It's, it, you know, it's, um, hmm. you know, I'd, I'd rather send and a few big ships or ships that have a lot of I mean, you've got old hulls, old Excelsiors that are probably like basically hollow that have crew storage space. A flagship mm -hmm. is going to be everything but necessarily open space, you know? So, dedicated yeah. ships, I'd assume. And Fry Minis ask a good question. Mm. $2. Do we like the combat decal on the saucer bottom? We thought it was an odd choice considering it's the old TNG style Delta. Mm. Um,. Which is outdated at this point. So, is it an indication of when the ship was built? Possibly. I think it's a question that needs to be asked at some point. So, although mm. Tekka not says the D was big, was big to counter the warbirds, 
No, other way around. The Warbirds were big to counter the Enterprise D. The Enterprise D didn't know about the Warbirds when it was being built. Other mm -hmm. around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> BJ Tehran, two dollars. Looks better than Enterprise B. Hmm. In a lot of ways, yes. I really like the Enterprise B though. But I, I, st I think I would still remove the the secondary hull random black lines. Like I really don't mind. I actually quite like the windows in the neck, although they're very random. They seem very just because, you know? Mm. But I definitely I think I'd remove the elements. It just feels too noisy. I don't know. I disagree. Like I said before, I like those. But I, I know why you're saying that, honestly. I just, I think it looks good. So, we, oh, yeah, it's such a tricky go, balance. Go, yeah. yeah, go to the uh, more side comparison shot. Not, not, not the complete side, like the three-quarter with missing the nacelles. Yeah. Yeah, that, that pennant, that man. That pennant. That's, uh, that's a real <laughs> pennant. So small. There you, should, you should line up the pennants. Scale it to the pennant. Make the delta the same size. That's what you should do. But they haven't got one on the Enterprise B. Well, they do. It's right on the side. It's even lit up. Yeah, it's but they haven't. But that, would be, that, would that would be huge. That would be huge. Exactly. That would be tiny. That's what you should do. That would be tiny. Be a, that would be the size and of a the shuttle. That would be tiny. What? Yeah, we'll do it then. It'd be fucking hilarious. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, no, I don't want to. Look what makes me do, guys. Uh, I like the black lines, not fond of the B, says Tam Nook. The square holes on the neck of the Enterprise B, B torpedo tubes or can ships. They are not torpedo tubes. The square holes in the neck are actually like. They're, they're for. Inches? No, they're. they're Cargo bay doors. They are cargo bay doors. Yes, you see, you see, um, work bees, um, in yeah, in generations, in generations, flying That's in true. and out, which is very random but true. Yes, yes. So, <clears throat> do it, Sam. Scale it. He's he's working on it, Gary. Okay. Well. There is a U.S. Navy destroyer that's allowed to fly a skull and crossbones because of its namesake. The combat could be a similar thing. So something, the ship named the Archimedes was important in the TNG time, got destroyed, and this is an homage to it. I'm not opposed to the idea, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. We've never seen huge deltas on the bottom of anything, even on even in Star Trek Online or... It just seems like an odd choice, so... Well, it seems convoluted as a reason. Yeah. I think the obvious reason is because a guy wanted to. I don't think there's much else really to that. It wasn't well thought out, it was just a... Okay, well, here you go, here's... So I've now scaled the delta of the hull to the delta of the hull of the Enterprise B. If, they, if the deltas were now in scale, like Captain Stuart Foley asked... I haven't seen it yet. Cause I, there we go. I've done as requested. What? I, no, that's totally wrong. You said scale it, so I scaled it. Yeah, but the dark Archimedes should be f ginormous. No, I scaled the pennant, the pennant on the bottom of the saucer to the pennant on the side no, of the, the B. No, the pennant on the side of the both ships together is there a pennant the same in the scale. Archimedes? Yes. Yes, there is. That's what I was talking about. I'm like, what are you doing? <clears throat> no, see, I was like, you want to scale the pennant? Is there only one pennant? What are you on about? Right. It's not a pennant. A pennant is a strip. That is a logo. Yes, the logo. The logo pennant. But that's not a pennant. A pennant is a strip. The a long pennant. banner. All right, let me try. Cause it's really I was using English. I don't know what you were speaking. I'm using Canadian. and That was your first mistake. Guys in the chat. A pennant. You knew, you, knew, you knew what I was talking about. I just didn't know one was there. I thought they just didn't. It was so dark. I didn't even see the detail. Oh. Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, they're not that Ring. off, then. That's not right. Ring in mind puts in $5. Thank you. The nacelle pylons were the best structural change. Right angles are weak points. The Excelsior's nacelles are in danger of twisting off. I, I never was a fan of the right angled strut. Yeah, but you could argue that the, the Enterpriser should be more curved. The Connie, I mean, it's just, this is future tech. They've designed for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, no, the, the, pennant, the pennants are about the same size. Already. Are they, though? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the gold is about the same size as the silver. But I've, I've just angled it slightly. Yeah, okay. yeah they're about the same. Okay. Well, there you go. See? They are just scaling. I mean, yeah, slightly off, but not much. Uh, can you scale... Oh, sorry. Fireman needs $2. Can you scale versus Disco Shuttle, the best ship? And band. Ah, oh, see you. Look the same. See. You. <laughs> Eric Martin, five dollars. What are the big gray areas on the sides of the saucer on the new ship? Yeah. We don't know. We talk about that in our video. I mean, they definitely highlight the blinkies, but boy, do they highlight the blinkies. These are the blinkies we got right. Look at them. Please ignore the ones we got wrong. Thank you. Move and yet, along. And yet, we still have a goal, a red one on the front for no reason. That's what I mean. They didn't highlight that one because they don't want us to look at it. I just love in this um, look at them both at the front. Now, this is not kept by every every ship. I get that, but if you look at the Archimedes, the the, the glowings on the bottom of the saucer, it's being lit from the middle, but the lights are split. Yeah. There's, yeah. there's not a light source. Whereas obviously because the excels, it's being lit from one of those things. There is no light source, so it is the convention of being lit from a light source with no light being there. So that's it's got... lit by Raytheon lighting. <laughs> Bit of a. It's amazing what you see when you're actually looking. <laughs> yes. Sherlock Holmes says that all the time. Yeah. You see, but you do not observe. Sergeant Montgomery, two dollars. Nice you. ship. Feels like a diplomat head of state ship. It does, especially with that big delta on it. It feels like a special kind of envoy ship. And Storm Chaser 446 puts in $5. Lower Deck Season 3 needs to do the Akira class with the Sovereign nacelles, just like my ship uh, on Star Trek Online. Uh, hmm. Everybody thinks their STO ship is the best. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody, who is it? Uh, Sci Fi Nation asks throwback to the old eyebrow design? No, not where they are, not the way they're shaped. They're too much. They're too much on the side. If they were slid, both slid up forward a bit, I might buy that because they're the same color. But yeah, where they are, I'd say no. As Samuel said in our, our video uh, earlier today, it's it's almost like a callback to the cage, where they got the black stripes on each side of the saucer. But. <clears throat> and I just read briefly because Mike the man did an interview with uh, dot com, and the interviewer actively said, throughout the season, Mariner dropped hints that she's bisexual, and it culminated in her confession that she likes Jennifer the Andorian. When was the decision to make ha to have Mariner come out? And uh, Mike does not say she does. <laughs> doesn't say she doesn't, but she, he very explicitly doesn't well, say, doesn't confirm. He does. That. He does. There was another article I read the other day where he said in season three we're going to see them dating. Oh, well, there you go. Hold on, let's see if I can... I'm glad we got that it. context, but the act of the avoid I thought was a, a deliberate, well, wait and see thing there. Here we go. Oh, that, that was quick. But right, All right, in the third season, she and Jennifer are seeing each other, and they're, this is Mike McMahon, and there are stories we tell about that. What I would say is it's not easy to date Mariner, and this sh really shows... And this show really is a not is not about Mariner's romantic relationships. It's about how she sees herself and how she treats friends and colleagues more than romantic partners. So it was important for me from the point of view of Star Trek, having these people in your life and seeing where these stories go. Mariner's sexuality to me has always been, she seems like she has the kind of character who can uh, run into a villain and awkwardly Mariner had dated him or her before. Those are the kind of stories I really get excited about. With Mariner, there's these historical sorts of things we see with her. So we will see Mariner and Jennifer dating. 
and see how that affects her. But really, the tetch, tectronic shift that's going into Mariner's season three arc is right when she opened herself up and everything was going great. It all gets taken away from her. How does that affect somebody who doesn't like it when people leave her or are taken away? Well, there you go. One of you actively doesn't say it. The other one, he just goes out and says it. That's funny. Well, glad, yeah. glad we called it. Because, mm -hmm. like, ah, not with the officer. The, but, uh, okay, cool. And Eric Martin throws in five you, dollars. Eric. Thank you so much, Eric. I really like the new ship, but the neck and saucer are just a bit on the chunky side. The neck is, yeah, um, I kind of like it, but... It almost, it almost does look like the Excelsior is wearing a scarf. It's got kind of that chunkier look, yeah. And it is hard not to think, well, the saucer is just beefier, and you can't quite place why or how. It's just yeah. more. <laughs> it's put on a couple of pounds. <laughs> but it's just it's just somewhere. It grew is, a beard. Yeah. Neck beard. <laughs> Which is why it's such a great optical illusion ship. Because it's not quite clear. But I mean, this this um this front view, this is sort of the one I I, I stopped even bothering compared to the, uh, the sovereign. People said, oh, it's just the it's this a sovereignty excelsior. It isn't. There's nothing else the sovereign except the nacelles and the yellow deflector. Like that, it's not a hybrid. It's just the excelsior changed a bit. Like there really isn't many parallels specifically. It's kind of remarkable. They could have done more. You know, they could have removed the neck or elongated it or out of the same taper from the Sovereign. You know, there's more it could have done, but they just didn't. So I don't think it's a fair to call it even a Sovereign parallel, just mm -hmm. those are, that's a new style of nacelles. I mean, the, you know, the nacelles of the Equinox are quite Sovereign-y, but unique. These are more sovereign -y than unique, but they're also not directly Sovereign cells, so. Yeah, harangue in mind, the Chonk Celsius. Yes. <laughs> it gained weight during lockdown. <laughs> yep. I'd buy that. Yeah, gain weight during lockdown. Yes. Yeah. Will Perkins puts in 279 Canadian with no comment. But thank you so much for the Will, super chat, Will. That is awesome. Will, say something, man. Happy voice there. I mean, you do have your voice there, obviously, but thank you. As for our poll, we have 131 votes. Oh, yes. So 59% of people that are watching right now have seen all three episodes for our ship. Fantastic. 15% have seen one, and 14% have seen two. No. Good oh, Somebody here. All right, I'll talk to the people. Yeah, man, there absolutely is. It, it, I mean, obviously you can tell by the amount of rings and uh, and lights. Yeah, there's two sets of lights in the saucer on the Enterprise B, and three here, which means the whole thing just feel more proportioned, a more out of proportion. And obviously, yes, the bridge dome, which we have mentioned previously, which which actually is interesting because the the lower planetary sensor lighting rig proportionately smaller in our new design, but the bridge is massively bigger. But, as someone said earlier, I am actually all for that being because of the new impulse drive. Hmm. Orville Nation, $5. With a little dancing pair having a party. Thank you very much, Orville Nation. And Will does say messed up with the comments. His actual Super Chat comment was, like to think the chunkiness might be something to do with post Dominion War design intend to intend to be beat up more. Interesting. I like that. Yeah, no more no more Odyssey mistakes. Pick yeah. up that neck. Yeah, if we need to have a neck, it'll be a chunky boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I mean that's yeah. I can buy that. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. 150 people watching. That's mm. amazing. 146 likes. That's also great. But four more likes, guys. Let's get to 150 at least. Uh -huh. That would be amazing. At least. I want all of them. Anyone videos. else have any suggestions for this? Because a lot of people pointed out that it looks like Andrew Probert's. Which I was just looking for as well. I'm glad you. <laughs> yeah. Don't you saw Andrew Probert's um, original design for the Enterprise C. Yeah. The Ambassador class. And I don't know. I. I can kind of see where they're coming from, but it, it never once crossed my mind when we were mm -hmm. talking about it. 
And we did like a 35 minute record plus a 10 minute pre. Not once do we mention it in 40 minutes yeah. of hardcore discussion. I'm just saying. I, I even pulled out the, the, the editor of Celsius concept design that yeah. Yeah, yeah. almost nobody has seen. Yeah. <laughs> so. What does that tell I you? I don't know. I think, I think they're referring specifically to the struts. Thanks. Hold on a second. And I am going to try and make her. I think I have a render. If it's on this back wall, if one of you guys donated, then I have a r r something of it. Going through my new, well, going through my catalog of renders. Because you wonderful people sponsored them for the background. Oh, come on. How did no one sponsor this? <laughs> I've got a lot of shuttles. I've got Sabre. I've got all sorts. But where is the... Oh, maybe no one did. Dan says it reminded him of the Excelsior con or the Ambassador concept. <clears throat> oh, I have to do a fresh render thing. So you don't have a side view. Oh. I'll show oh, you a nice ortho of it online. Well, yeah, but that's a good point. But no, I, 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 I'm just saying that I found one. <laughs> All right, so let's bring in James McGill, two dollars. Which Star Trek show and movie introduced the most starships? Show would probably be Deep Space Nine. Movie is definitely Star Trek Three, and First Contact. I, I would I say I would say Show would be Enterprise because they're almost a new ship every single episode, but you don't remember most of them. Voyager had the most uh, ships to note because again they had ones almost every episode. I think they meant Federation starships. I would hope. No, oh, uh, probably well, probably Voyager then because all those. DS9 ships produced in uh, First Contact. So, First Contact, I guess. I guess DS9 introduced the Centaur and the Defiant. Voyager had Prometheus, Nor Novus, uh, Delta Fly, if you want to be technical. Because Runabout was. Was Runabout in TNG first? Or was it fresh for DS9? I can't remember if it was. No, I think it was probably fresh for DS9. Mm hmm. All right, so I have the three here. Now, you've got to remember, guys, this obviously was not an actual ship created. <laughs> so, disclaimer, yeah. this isn't a real ship. <laughs> Although, yes, I guess it is on the walls, so I guess it is a real ship, just also isn't a real ship. It's not the same one that's on the wall, though. Well, no. Well, and, and this There's is quite a few differences. Yeah, and this is uh, Tobias Richter's one, which he did with Andrew Probert, where he's able to even refine it even more, so it's the... The epitome of what that could have been, rather than what we would have seen, etc., etc. Uh, let me just grab that now. So yeah, this is a more of an exercise in retroactive understanding. And Picard maneuver says for new Federation starships in a TV show, wouldn't Discovery be in the running? Oh, so many more class ships. Oh. The first few episodes, few episodes alone. Uh, no, because it's fucking Discovery, and no. Yeah, but they also cheated, because if you include nine who the hell cares ships in one scene and never use them again, it's like, uh, yeah. It's, it, it, I mean, yeah, yes, you're so right, not. but that's such a, a, a skewed metric. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here's all three put together. Hmm. Now, again, I, I've, 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 there's not to scale, but I've still got the scaling from the the emitters, although if you said that people thought the ambassador because of the struts, the struts are literally the opposite, so they can't be I've been thinking that mm. and again this is Andrew Probert and Device Richter's sort of final version actually the secondary hull is very similar to that front part but that's about it <laughs> honestly, yeah, there's the, not much else yeah, the neck's completely different the source is completely different I mean, maybe you could argue, and this is... I, 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 maybe you'll say I'm reaching here, Stuart, but the bridge dome matches the bridge dome front part of the new ship. <laughs> ah, you're reaching. Man. Oh, damn, you caught me. <laughs> Although, boy, you do not think that, that uh, secondary has that much, like, waste space, do you, on this version? My God. That is a lot of empty space. What do you guys yeah, think? Not, not it's the first time we've seen like, this. Yeah. Uh, and then... Uh, oh, oh, what was that? Someone said... 
Uh, 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 uh. Well, somebody said... So the MSD, isn't the MSD a, a scale reference? Nope. Because it's not an MSD, it's just a... If it was an MSD, it would be, but it's not. This is just a computer diagram version. Yeah. Which is different. What do you guys think? Oh, bye, Robert. Oh, uh, let's see. Ring Mine puts in $5. Could the chunky mech hold racks of extra shuttlecraft? The flagship uh, lose... Flagships lose a lot of those. This isn't the flagship. It's not even I don't a high know why people are ship. saying this is the flagship. Okay. Even the flagship high... is still the Enterprise. Yeah, it should be the Enterprise A, I would assume. And no, I don't think there's anything like shuttlecraft in the neck of this one. I just wouldn't make any sense. Uh, Will Garmer, $5. Archie is much more balanced design. Archie. The Archimedes is a much more balanced design than Excelsior. Oval saucer balances the mass between the hulls better, and the nacelles don't stick out so far. I mean, yeah, it's a nice blend between the old standard of round uh, saucers to the new one uh, with the the Enterprise E. Which, which even with this shot, you can't tell it's oval. It hides it so well; it just looks like a big, a big circle. It's really weird, Stuart. Why can't we have a scale reference to help us out? My God. Hmm. Why? Yeah. I wish, man. I wish. Although, to be fair, uh, there was this other view, which I know is not your favorite, but it's worth looking at, is that chunky boy weird side view, which, again, is just super different in proportion. Uh, which was the last shot in the package I sent. And Hail Cthulhu says Discovery is prime timeline. Deal with it. It's not though. Fifty years of Star Trek history, multiple yeah. eras. Discovery is the, the anomaly in that prime timeline. So, yeah, it's not. So, as and much as they say it is, sorry. And obviously, my answer is of course it is. But if the designs don't make sense, then you can call them out for being designs that don't make sense, and therefore they're at fault, not the rest of the shows. Because and my answer is, yeah, my answer is it's clearly not. It's the Discovers. So. My answer is yes, but they got so many things wrong, it might as well not be canon. Because that was their choice to get them wrong. Klingons yep. don't have cloaks then. And also they forgot, and they ignored it and moving on. Unfortunately, that's now canon. <laughs> JB, Cap, obviously they needed a bigger neck to accommodate all of the turbo lift roller coaster action. Ah, yeah. Yes, that's true. See, now this view does look very sovereign actually. Because this one, you can definitely feel the extended yeah. oval. And the sweat back yeah, see. Yeah, see, if we just if that had been in the background of something, we would have thought it might have been a sovereign because there's really the only thing that's the anomaly there would be the neck. Other than that, if it, it looks very sovereign-y. so. Well, it's still I mean it's still mul you know it's still out of whack in a few places, but that wouldn't take much to convert. If you made the back part more integrated, the neck down, and take out the impulse drive, then you've got yeah, then the silhouette is pretty much a sovereign. Hmm. Mm. That's yeah. It, it's it. It's both lankier, but also kind of fits in a, in a strange way better. And Thomas N says, "What is the ship to the left? That is the the, the Nova class." Yes. Well, I like to the right. We finally got a blue. A blue California. I'm closing this poll. Do you have another poll idea, my friend? I can do one. All right, you do one up. Car Maneuver. I right. like a lot of the new ship designs from Discovery, especially the smaller ones, not the Discovery of Shinjo. Good for you. Enjoy. We just, uh, you know, care about the design canon lineage and, you know. As, we had said, as we've said all along, if they said it was a reboot or a reimagining of the timeline instead of Prime, we would have given them credit for doing some really funky, cool designs. And if but, Brian Fuller wasn't involved, he wouldn't have said, make every ship flat, make all the cells not round, things that don't fit the era, don't fit the style, make them called yeah. copper, you know, simple things. If you if John Eves wasn't given the restrictions he was given, he would have designed a much better fleet. Yes. Same concepts, better. I mean, we've seen them in Star Trek Online look a ton better. Even the worst ones are better in Star Trek Online when they actually properly design them, because that team spends more time, more artistic, whatever. So it's more, at least in our interpretation, how they fit into... It's just a you know failed premise. An era doesn't fit. Once you do that, what can you do? You know, you've already yep. 
you've already failed when you start. Like the like the uh, you know, Klingon ships. You failed before you began. We say don't make me like Klingon ships. <laughs> you failed when you began. Shane Ackrey, two dollars. Love the new ship, but it looks like a wedding cake. <laughs> With the stack neck, yeah, kind of. Um, that English gentleman, uh, or gent, puts in 10 pounds. Uh, the way I see it, if it deviates too far from what is considered Trek, then the long-term fans are entitled to disavow it. Just my viewpoint, though, Lower Decks is more palatable. <sighs> Lower Decks is much more palatable. In many ways, for a lot of things. Well, they're trying to make Star Trek for Star Trek fans. And Snoopy McQueen, five dollars. This is why I watch Trek Yards. Thanks. For what specifically? <laughs> Just the ship discussion, or what? Is something we said recently, or what? Let us know, Snoopy. All right. So, hard question to end on, as in for the polls. Your favorite. Do you, would would you go for the Excelsior, the Enterprise B, or the Archimedes if you had to pick one? Uh, I feel like I'm going to be quite annoyed by this because, like you said, this is the new boy, so it gets people's votes. I'd say the Archimedes, for, for for me personally. See, the B has a lot of that extra bulk, which kind of helps it all blend together better. The Excelsior is quite thin and weedy, but in like a sleek way. The yeah, B kind of yeah. fixes that in a lot of ways. And the Archimedes re bloats it out. But also change it enough that it's not the same design, almost. Uh, John Chamness puts in $5. Sending our pup to see the great koala today. Oh. Sad face. Mm. Cue the bagpipes. We'll watch the live later. Have a good one, guys. Thank you, John, for joining us. And so sorry to hear that. I know what that's like. I got pups of my own. It's it's awful. So. And I often commune with the great koala, as you know, Stuart. And, and he'll be welcoming and loving of any such people and creatures. I wonder if they'll be able to just meet the great koala. You know. And it asks, it asks to use the Cerritos. What does the koala need with the star? <laughs> and it's sending us to a eucalyptus planet? <laughs> it writes itself. What does a koala need with the starship? Good, good stuff. That would be good, though. That would mm -hmm. be real good. But, I, but wouldn't it be... Oh, maybe it should be a Q. Maybe the great koala is actually just John Delancey. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I really sorry to hear that, John. So hopefully... Hopefully we can cheer you up later when you're rewatching this. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Bryce. Yeah, yeah, it would be great to see the uh, Proba and Ambassador class on lower decks. That'd be... A, I mean, it would... It would mm. Yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice way to sort yep. of make it canon for realsies. Yeah, they made, they made the Titan canon. And the Titan had less screen time than the Ambassador version, which was actually on the wall for three years. <laughs> so, make that a real ship. Just call it the Am yeah, Ambassador Proto. Proto Ambassador. And Snoopy answered the question with a $2 super chat. Your discussion on ships and Star Trek in general. Well, thank you, Snoopy. We appreciate you guys. So, Yes. Uh, Richie Apple. Trek yards aren't haters. Hate watchers that complain about everything. There is something you guys like in every show. Even if you're critical of newer stuff, as yep. I am. No, it'd be obscene if we say we're haters. Uh, we're clearly not haters. We call out all the good and all the bad, because that was what's the point. Mm -hmm. You know. There's a lot of bad and good Trek. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, you know, those that say that, I was not you, Rich, but those that say that, you know, instantly forget we like Discovery Season 3. You know, if you say we're Discovery Lovers, you forget about Season 1 reviews. If you say we're Discovery Haters, you forget about Season 3 reviews. Look, the show gets better, we review it better. That's not up to us, Stuart. We don't control our reviews. The show writers control the reviews of how good it is, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like Lower Decks. There's been some disappointing episodes this season. So we have called them out. And why? You've got to be a fair reviewer. Indeed you do. So that's the top view again. And bottom, I guess. Which you never saw, I guess, unless you went back and watched the video. I did watch it today, yeah. Oh, there we go. So that's the comparative one. Hmm. 
Yeah, and at the time when this is on screen, I'm saying how the secondary hull is so is thicker on the Archimedes, and then the way you have it scaled, it's like, oh man, it's clearly not. I sound like an idiot. So thank you for I that. I just did the shot like you said to. Yeah, no, I was like, uh huh. But but it's interesting. You can see the impulse drive is is shrunk, but also comes out in an angle as well. Because mm -hmm. this one we obviously, like you said, use in retrospect rather than talk about it at the time. So this is our first time really looking at it. <coughs> yeah, I mean it's just mm. not. Oh my god! It, it, it everything's just different. <laughs> None of the proportions are the same as the Excelsior or the B. None of them. Like that second hole is so got to be so much more drawn in, so much less long. It's got to be. And that's how the ovalness just. Mm. You know what I think this would have benefited from? I think it would have benefited from the Enterprise E style, those like black wing things on the saucer to give those a bit of depth. I think that would mm -hmm. have benefited from it. Would have made it a bit more E ish, but. I think add those, yeah. take out the connection point to the nacelles, <laughs> put them in somewhere proper. Those two things might have helped make it more of a sovereignty uh, Excelsior hybrid. Mm. Yeah, and we're almost at 175 likes. We have 174 oh, right now. We just need one more like to hit that 175 mark. But that being said, we're going to go for 200. I think there's enough people here that haven't hit like yet. So please hit that like button if you haven't. Let's see what we can get up to, guys. And fifty and... more dollars to get our minimum. We are slowly eating up there. Um, so if we can get you know, five tens, we'd be very happy. Tell me what you guys think. Mm -hmm. This would be nice. And the Dark Lord Revan throws in five dollars. Mm. First ship I ever saw on the big screen was a USS Excelsior mm. in the undiscovered country. Uh, and I fell in love with it. Mm. Got some, mm -hmm. I mean, that whole scene, I wish there was an Excelsior miniseries. George would have been great, mm -hmm. and that crew would have been good. Turn her into the somebody wave. Asked you know? earlier if you could make, somebody asked earlier if you could make a poll that included the Sovereign with those ones. Too. Yeah, I'll do that once we be 100. That'll be interesting too. Eric, Eric Martin, $5. Why not have one impulse engine on the saucer and one lower on the secondary hull or neck? Mm. Yep. Yeah, I think I would have liked that sense. as well. And it would have added someone's idea of making it a source separation, that a feature. Have one in the neck like Enterprise D, have one in the source of like this. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Look at that. We're six away from 200, guys. You guys are awesome oh, with the likes. It. That flew up there. So six more people need to hit that like button. And Mr. And Captain, another... these aren't to scale. Don't don't be thinking that. I just made yeah. them the same height-ish just for ease of viewing. Don't don't. They're not the same size. There's your very out proportion there. Yeah. I mean, if you scale oh. the nacelles to the same length, then it's, it's, the Archimedes is quite a bit longer. But Well, yeah. That's the thing. None of the pieces are the same, so you can't scale them properly. Ah! See, at least the Cerritos, you can kind of scale the escape pods to be right. But... Grr. All right, so the f final of 106 votes... Favorite design out of the three was Archimedes, 56%, Enterprise B, 23%, Excelsior, 19 A rolling, you know, absolute smash success there. Let's try that again by adding the Enterprise <coughs> E to the mix, which will certainly change the question. As 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 Anna and Zania as Caspian, is this live? Never caught one of these live. Hi, yeah. Yes, we are live right now. Welcome. <laughs> Say stuff please. you want to say to us for the last seven years. Go for it! Please, please let us know your thoughts on this ship design. Oh, good old gamer. Come on, you you know the answer to that. Come on. Come on. What's this question, Stuart? You're size chart when you get the proper scale. Uh, yeah, come on now. Come on. Come on. That's, that's just... Come on. Why are you even asking? Come on. What a question. For the side glows on the impulse engines, two words, strafing engines, says yeah. Doug Peterson. Yep, God. for quick sideways maneuvering. I, I, I don't mind. It's for drifting. It's for drifting. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Huh. I don't mind it, though. I don't necessarily think it makes sense, but, I mean, what? 
Well, be honest. What makes less sense? The uh, pennant at the bottom or that? So the pennant or what? Sorry. Or the the logo on the bottom or the side impulse drives. Oh. That's tough, actually. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. The logo on the bottom, bottom makes less sense. Yeah, I think I like the impulse engines more. Not by a lot, but uh, yeah. Now this certainly. Mag... Oh wow. Sorry, Magnus four zero nine six says yes. Savi is the sexiest starship ever built. You all know it's true. It's not though. Sorry, the Sovereign. It's a it's a nice ship, but there are some angles it's just fuck. Nice sensor, YouTube. Oh. Nice sensor. Yeah, it's just fugly from certain angles, especially the side. It just, it's missing some, like, yes, yeah, some views it's amazing. Other views, not so much. The sexiest ship from all views is the TOS Connie or the refit. The refit, yeah. Pretty much, wonder... pretty much every view is just bang on sexy. But boy, the, the, the pole is certainly unexpected. Uh, what hardest question of favorite design is out of the four, Excelsior is currently 10%, so it's dropped by eight, I believe it was. Enterprise B down six percent, that's down like 13%. Enterprise Z beating the Archimedes win last time, the Archimedes only 18, so that is a totally mm -hmm. destroying everyone has now moved their votes, let alone. So it certainly puts into perspective when people put a favorite oh. in. Your real favorite versus a favorite out of a bunch. That's really interesting, actually. Well, when it gets to a hundred votes, I'm, I'll get I got another poll idea. So. Yeah, which we've never done. Actually, that and actually, this might be interesting. Actually, maybe do a, 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 a well. Also, enough you'd have to join in. I mean, 150 we here, that'd be great. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if we did a fan poll based who wins, like that that whole thing where you do two and then you go to the best. Like, see who wins publicly. Tyrion system. I'm not keeping score. I'm not keeping track of that shit. Well, you just do it. Well, it's not hard, so I'll do it. I know. I know. If you want to do it, I'll do it. Oh, lazy. Much. Right now. <laughs> I think eight options. Okay. Uh, but we interesting to see, like, if we, have zero, so if we have zero control at that point, all audience reaction, what do you say? They were like, best ship versus best ship would be Discovery versus Le Lesserino. We're like, fuck's sake. Why, audience? Why? You're turning me apart, audience! Harangue in mine throws in five dollars. A lot of Trek streamers make Trekkies look like assholes. The two of you are endearing and respectful to all sentient beings. Thank you. Aw. Oh. Great koala blesses us with good vibes. Thanks. I'm respectful to all sentient beings as long as they aren't assholes. <laughs> uh, I, I like the canon too much sometimes, but I mean, if you don't use canon, what's the point? Why, why be called Star Trek if you're not in the canon? You know? Yeah. Uh, your own thing. Uh, it's just like um, what's it called? Like the Joker wasn't canon whatsoever, but it was a fantastic film. So it came, it went, it won awards, but you can't yeah. use it in any way. Like it is now its own thing. It, it's completely a separate. They're making another one. Well, they're making yeah, they're making it in their own continuity, but it can't. You can't use Batman with it. You can't use like it's it's its own thing. So you won awards, and it was great. But it is what it is. Moving forward. Whereas in the DC stuff, they try their own way. And... Yeah, I'm ending the poll. Oh, um, okay. Final results. 106 votes. Enterprise E takes the win. Oof. Wow. Um, Steve That's Howard crazy. throws in five pounds. Wonder Wait. what other legacy Trek ships lower decks will kit bash. Would love to see an Enterprise version of the Centaur. Just give, just give us more things. Just give them more things. Although Philippe again says, I have the trick. Oh, the feeling trick is just two fans. No masks, not playing a role. I like it. Yes. Yep. That's yes. us. Uh, we try to be yeah, the people you see talking to you are just it's exactly how we are when you meet us in person. We don't put on a persona. Yeah. No, I mean, it, yeah, you, I mean, you've said so many times trying to, you know, with two guys in the pub if you're talking to us. Yeah. Yeah. And we've, you know, we've, we've often, you know, lamented to ourselves for a few seconds how we've actively missed out on YouTube fame by being balanced, fair, and non-reactionary. You know, it, those that were Discovery haters got 15 times the views we did and therefore got hundreds of more dollars than we did without doing any more work, arguably a lot less work. 
we didn't hop on that train. We missed out on a lot of money, a lot of subscribers. We could have been at probably double where we are now if we were on that bandwagon. But we wouldn't have been honest. And it wouldn't have got us respect. And we wouldn't have talked to Mike Man, Mike Man last year. We wouldn't have, you know, went to Vegas and had, I, I apologize, but the Asian bridge officer Discovery, whatever his character's name in or his real name, I don't know either because Discovery doesn't tell us that much. Bryce, maybe, probably Bryce. He knew us. He liked us. He thought we did good stuff. You know, the the, mm -hmm. the, the really disrespect the, the show in ways that don't necessarily be disrespect worthy. You know, not that actors should be the one to validate you because they're only actors, but you know, it's nice to register when they think we're balanced because they have obviously more personal stake than we do. Although we've watched the show longer than they have in theory, as in Trek, so we have more. To, but you know, yes. Fleet Pass Swift back two dollars. Hey. Except impersonators. Except impersonators because airlocked them. Lol. Mm. What? what? I'm confused. Flame four five six four puts in five dollars Australian with no comment, but thank you so much. Thank it's, you. We're almost there, guys. Another twenty five dollars oh, would be awesome. Right then. At least. Right then. Yeah. And last super chat slot right now it is Flame four five six four who, it's a new name I haven't seen yeah. it before. At least super chatting, so appreciate that. Uh, so right now they have the last super chat slot for today. So if anybody wants to snipe it, mm -hmm. it's we're right there. there. We're right there. And I mean, I do remember uh, Flame 4562. I don't know if they're related. And Flame 4463. I, I don't know. I mean, maybe the relation to you, Flame. I don't know. What is your poll? Your poll is favorite ship design. My goodness. TOS Constitution Class, Refit Constitution Class, Enterprise D, Enterprise E. Oh no, Stuart. <laughs> That's a hard one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, that English gent, we can only do four polling options. Yes. Which sucks, yes. but it's just the way it is. So that's why I did not include the Enterprise C. I love the Ambassador class. Don't start on me about the Ambassador class. Although, I love it. Although I don't think it would beat many of those options, let's be honest. I don't think that would get many points. I mean, if that if that beats a Constitution class classic, that's a little bit sad. So it, yeah, maybe if you throw the Defiant in there, people are like, oh, I find that sexy. But nah. Oh, Fleet Pass said it. He's talking about the part about being respectful to all sentient beings, except impersonators. Because oh yeah, we have some yes. impersonators that Price. show up occasionally. It's oval. Oh, we even had a Captain Guard Captain... once. Yeah, well, no, Captain Bowley with the picture of my face. And there was one of you with, and you photoshopped your hair. What? Uh, for that one live what, what, we did. What's happened? What? what? I don't, know about uh, it. don't worry about it. It happens on the late night lives. The oh. guy keeps getting booted because he keeps making new accounts. Oh, what does the, what they, what they say? I assume annoying, too, stupid stuff. Nothing. Nothing. They, oh. They're just fucking, you don't impersonate somebody and not tell me who you actually are. I told them to email us and tell us who they are. And they're like, I'm Harry Potter. I'm not afraid of anything. It goes by the name of Reezy. R-E-E-Z-Z-E. -Z -Z -E, or Z-E-E. -E -E. And uh, I don't put up with that bullshit. If it was somebody like Anti-Tracker or Lower Reloaded or you know, one of the people that follow them that I know, yeah, by all means, put in a fake name. Have some fun. As long as I know who you are. But I don't know who you are, and you're impersonating mods. They started impersonating Fleet Paw and stuff as well, so it's just not fucking acceptable, in my opinion. That's weird. Yeah. Okay. Area 51, $5. The hater channels are filling up on candy very fast. You guys are eating your veggies. <laughs> in the long run, you'll be healthier. That's the theory. We hope so, but uh, just it's rough seeing other people be so successful and having the, f the you know, the silver play button and, and we're sitting here going we've worked our asses off and we got nothing i mean except for you guys to show for it which is awesome but you know the riches in in other ways yeah i mean you know daily lower decks videos pretty much daily for 10 weeks they haven't done those no literally no one in the world i mean because you don't get the views for it but no one in the world's done that but we've given that them and no one's on renders like this the e and the b put together with same lighting you know yeah. uh, but you know guys you guys keep us going <laughs> kyle wong five pounds hey guys logging in late what did i miss uh, i missed a lot everything so go back and watch uh harang mine two dollars pew oh going for the last last super chat mm -hmm. slot but then get 
not only sniped, but like annihilated from orbit with a nuke from IMEC with a $25 super chat. Damn. Take, take a note. Your $2 snipe. And says, Voyager is the best looking ship as well as the best ship character. I feel it was the most fleshed out during its run. It's not the best looking ship. Sounds it's not like the that. best ship character. TOS Enterprise is. Sorry. I, I, I can understand. I wanted to put it, I wanted to put Voyager on this list, but then I thought it makes make it all enterprises. <clears throat> but but we so. know we know that's not you know Janeway on the Enterprise. We know it's not an Enterprise. It's like the Titans Enterprise too, according to some yep. people. So we hit a hundred votes, Stuart. That's interesting. Gonna make, a, gonna make a new poll. Yeah. I can't believe the TOS Connie got four percent. Like that. That is that that just makes me upset because that's not even at all accurate. Is that a slight stab into your heart? Well, considering the refit Connie is the same ship, not really. <laughs> but I should have just left the refit off that list because the TOS Connie is a thousand times sexier than the Enterprise-E. Whereas but the, it, it, is it is six times more popular according to our very small sample size. That's because everybody is young. It's their Enterprise. That's because you're 60, okay? Not everyone's young. Not really young. That's interesting, though. And then E beats D, but just. It's interesting. So, yes, if you want to close that out, I will. That's the other thing. Out. Enterprise D is way sexier than the E as well, but whatever. General Grievous, $2. Don't impersonate me without saying who you are. Yeah. I mean, I think he's like a unique, unique person. But, but Grievous is dead, though, so is it impersonating a dead guy? I mean, he's, he's reincarnated. That's, that's the real truth. Fleet Paw, Swift back, $2. Hello there. Oh, Fleet Paw. And Hello Jack there. Again. Maj Mac, Mac, $5. Thanks. E has the looks for my money. You guys work a ton. Thanks. Thank you. Jen, let's see. The Enterprise E. Okay, sorry. The Enterprise E. I'll be polling. Is, you talk. Yes, the Enterprise E. Sure, it's sexy. It's got a beautiful, like, supermodel face. Um, lots of money. Probably a good personality. But, by God, it's got no curves. It is just flat. It is, it's, its body is not quite there. So, but then you have the Constitution class, who's just all around sexy. Everywhere. <laughs> I'll shut up now. General Grievous, $2. General Kenobi, you are not... Yeah, take that, Fleet Paw. Squadra Course, $2. It's a we like you just the way you are, Snipe. Ooh. Well, Squadra Course now has the last Super Chat slot with that Snipe, so. <sighs> Paramount have two versions with Teos Enterprise, the original and the remastered in official videos online that keep using the original footage. What? Uh, Anthony Tsui, Tsui, five dollars. E, but D is the real enterprise for me. Uh, to me, thank you for your work, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is uh, going to be a controversial one, so please vote, guys. Good God. General Grievous, two dollars. TOS Enterprise loses. Suffer, Captain Foley. Just kidding. All right, General Grievous, airlock for you. Bye -bye. But, but, but his four robot hands will keep him in. I don't know if he can. And he can survive in space too, so he'll just crawl back in. I think. I think a Grievous can't be airlocked. Okay, this is an interesting one, guys. Least favorite design, out of the Crossfield, which is the Discovery, the Lesserina, which is the Hero and Picard, the Judge Enterprise, specifically the 09 version. And the Enterprise J. I couldn't think of a fourth one that's equally as disliked. So I threw in. So we've got a Prime Prime, Prime Picard, Prime Discovery, JJ, JJ. Please vote on this because I want to see all 150 of you vote on this. I'm really interested to see where people dislike because they're all less likable for different reasons. I'd really like to know what you guys think. We should just do a live of just different polls. I know. Just make up some polls during the day and just keep. Go until we hit a hundred. But we need like and... hundred and fifty people though, which they have already have turned up for it. That's see, that's a drunk yards. Oh drunk polls. P 
pure turn drunk ones. Because there's only 60 people, the polls are going to be the same people giving the same answers. No, because people are coming in and out all the time. We just yeah, don't yeah. see it. That is true. That is true. Hmm. Hmm. Well, guys, 223 likes. Can we get to 230? Can we get seven more likes? That'd oh, be awesome. Oh, come on. We've got to be out of Stuart. Older is is phenomenal. Guys, keep keep voting in the poll. I am really kind of surprised by the ratio here. And somebody asked to do a poll of all hero ships. We can't. You can only do four. <laughs> so you say Enterprise, Voyager... Defiant and what? Because the Enterprise, which Enterprise is it? You know what I mean? So you can't yeah. do all the hero ships, otherwise I would have. I mean, you could do like the first four heroes, the second four heroes, the third four heroes, then... Yeah. To find the, the, the top winner out of all of them, yeah. like you said. So it'd be like, you know, NX, then Connie, then Refit, then Excelsior, then B, then C, then D, then E, then Voyager Defiant thingy and thingy and then thingy 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 and thingy and then do the four <laughs> mm. so i'm actually really intrigued 38 percent of I mean, this is quite spread out and even but why less arena the least because surely the cross field i would have to put as my least favorite there if i had to pick one Which i would not put the cross field as my least favorite my least favorite would be last arena really but it's just so not yeah. star trek it's not even in the running for me exactly that's why it's winning though because <laughs> everything else you can go looks like Star Trek but like deformed yeah but I'd rather have a deformed tumour than a tumour that's green and pulsing <laughs> looks like an alien god I, I put that in as like a no one's going to vote for less arena that's shocking to me SK Wizgar 2322 puts in $2 Enterprise J looked, looks like glitched sim sliders <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. I like um, that. I am me. C puts in five dollars. My Thank headcanon you. for JJ Enterprise is that the whole thing is a hollow novel from Paris and Kim. Hence the throttles and flashy lights and <laughs> size. Also good. Also and, good. Oh, Rab Adler says it's a fucking Mass Effect ship. It is. It's, tur yep. it's a Turian ship. Yeah. Hundred percent. Will Garmer. Five dollars. You should do a multi-level pool with brackets like March Madness yes. to find the most popular starship. Starship Madness. That's a whole live chat right there. Actually, that is a good idea. So Samuel's idea was a good idea. Yeah. It just took Will to say it. So you trust Will? You trust Will? Oh, no, I was just. Will over me, Stuart. Are you going to do a graphic of all the brackets and fill them look, in as look, we go? Just to? because we've known Will. For eight years, over the seven years you've known me. I don't me. know who Will is. I'm just saying, <laughs> are you going to take the time to make a bracket and fill it in well, on screen so we can see and well, follow along? In fairness, I've got, because of this wall, I've got every ship top view. So it'd just be ships, wouldn't it? Yeah, you just. But you have to have the brackets. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, you just download fill a bracket. It, just put the ship in it. Yeah, easy. It would be easy. But you could even do, like, would you do every bracket? So it would be two options, and then see, yeah, you do every bracket, you see who wins, and you sort of see who wins out. That could be fun. But I feel like there should be a drinking one, though, just to kind of entice people. And, like, every bracket we drink. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Okay, 121 votes. We've got Crossfield, Lesserina, uh, JJ, and J. 17% Crossfield, 37% Les Arena, 26% JJ, and 20% J. So the Discovery is the most loved of those ships. My goodness. My goodness. And the Discovery's most hated. What? Oh. I see what you're saying. Also, look what Will just commented. See, you an eight an eight year veteran of Trek Yards and he, he just says all the things. Terrible. What did Will say? Will that he's a koala? What? Secrets. Hmm. <laughs> okay. One more poll. Guys, we're 
$13 away from a good number. That's it. We'll do one more poll, $13 if you can, and then we'll call it quits. Steve Howard, five uh, pounds. Can't for the life of me understand how the Giants base pizza cutter is that is Discovery is not killing this poll. Uh, yeah, I don't mind Discovery compared to some of those other ones, though, honestly. Um, we need to do the same. Well, if we do that, if that becomes a thing that we do on a regular basis, we need to do best FASA ships, have them on screen so people can pick. Well, then you've got to do the graphics for that. That's only fair. Well, we just have four in the fucking box, and then... Yeah. Yeah. So this should be an easy answer, guys. The only quantification in the, in the poll is captain notwithstanding, purely based on the ship tech, not the captain. So not nothing to do with Cisco versus Picard. So this should be an easy one. But people will vote. Vote now. I know he's gonna win. Well, I'm just I'm I'm seeing if after the after the. After the Crossfield debacle, we can have common sense reign. <laughs> I know, Flame. They do. They do. Oh, which defiance? Well, obviously oh. the <laughs> not the Sao Paulo and not the TOS one. So there you go. <laughs> the one with the cloaking device. <laughs> that English shed. I know, right? <laughs> and yet, thirty percent of you say it's up for debate. Uh, guys, five more dollars. Can we get a final, final like spike? But Stuart, this was a this was a nice chill one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A nice chill time. Uh, we are not living tomorrow. At least we better not be. But we don't know yet. Crossing the fingers. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's locked in. Well, yeah, they're professionals after all. Crossing fingers. Cross fingers for us, though, guys. Most right now, Steve Howard has that last Super Chat slot, so think about that, guys. Do you want him to have it? I, 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 I that sense Stuart doesn't want him to keep it. I don't know him either one way or the other, so it's up to you guys. So, Stuart, then what do you think about who a space valve to find an E and Y? The Defiant would win because it's a more powerful ship, more maneuverable, and it's also built to defeat the Borg. So the Enterprise E, sorry, Quantums and everything into, taken into consideration, I think the Defiant would still kick the shit out of the Enterprise. Oh my goodness. Well, we saw that the Lakota was able to beat its ass almost hand to hand, and that was a refitted Excelsior. And the Sovereign's way more advanced than refitted Excelsior. So we've already seen it fight another ship and it failed a bit. It held its own, but wasn't winning for sure. Nah. Disagree. And I would say easily the E because, if anything, it's just because its shields are massively more powerful than the Defiance. The Defiance is designed for short, sharp shocks. The E is designed to d do a long engagement. And they both have quantum, so that's sort of a moot point. Uh, the, they also have more to launchers for the E, way more phases better firing arcs that it, you know it can keep firing its phases throughout all of the arcs with defined you know yes we'll be able to dodge phaser fire but you know you expect to have better targeting sensors because it's a newer ship because the defiant was season three of ds9 and that would have been well both well, both designed at the same time but the e was launched after i would think and then obviously we include the uh nemesis version of the e with the extra torpedo launchers which is kind of extreme uh but yeah uh, super chats. We got Steve Howard, five pounds. Can't for the life of me understand how the giant space pizza cut it. Oh, I read that one already. Damn it. Space thing reckoning, five dollars. Here's your cash, you filthy animals. Thank you. Matthew Boardman, five dollars. Oh. Photon torpedo snipe. That's true. General Grievous, five dollars. The cross field is the Ralph McQuarrie concept and looks too Star Wars. The concept hull, like the imbass, like the acc acclimator destroyer and the quasar carrier. Those are all words I recognize, but I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. So. <laughs> and Squadra Course, $1 snipe. 
then got sniped out by Darth Crash a lot for the $5. Oh, yes. Akira wins all. <laughs> can fire large torpedoes. We'll say that can fire side torpedoes too. Uh, but John says it was not winning against the Lakota because it was trying not to kill anyone. You say mm. that, but you can still disable it without killing people. They were trying to just. Oh. They were trying. They were trying to tet for tet rather than going full on. But you can still disable the ship. They were trying not to. Thumb Warrior DX says defined as like a submarine. It's built to kill big ships like the E. Using stealth cloaking device. Mm. Well, it wasn't designed with a cloak in mind. They didn't know they were going to get a cloak when they designed it. That was a, a fun add-on. So I guess you know we also couldn't really fight the Borg that successfully in retrospect. So it was tweaked to be more efficient. Yeah. Like how it never really went up against the Borg just once. What the hell? Yeah. It, I, I, oh. Don't say it, Stuart. Don't say do a track short about it. <laughs> I'm not going to. A thing. <laughs> Oh, that's a cool. It's in five dollars. The Enterprise E was designed to fight the Borg. Just the Defiant is only designed to fight the Borg. The Sovereign just has the extra sciency junk. Well, <sighs> yeah, it also has eight times the crew, way more powerful warp core, way more phaser emitters, way more torpedoes in the storage. As forward photons as well as forward quantums. Hmm. Yeah. Phaser pulse cannons aren't the best for simply disabling. It's like trying to use a jackhammer to pound a hail nail into a wall. Yeah. Or it could be made, yeah. Yeah. But you can still overload shield emitters, I mean. Yeah. And John says, but we also saw the Defiant chew up larger Dominion ships that were bigger than the E. Mm, no, we didn't. Working in tandem with other ships, maybe, yeah. Yeah, it destroyed a cruiser once when a bird of prey flew into it. That, so that wasn't there. It failed to destroy the Borg battleships. That failed. It can kill bug ships like no one's business. That's fair. Uh, yeah, no, it didn't take any. It didn't do any Dominion big, 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 big ships. It's kind of weird it didn't, actually. <laughs> it could disable Regent Wharf's flagship, but that's, again, not really a fight. It was a, that, was a, that was a trophy ship rather than a real ship. Things, as soon as you say two defiance, you know what I mean. Like a lot, of, I've heard a lot of arguments where the defiance is designed to work as a squadron. As soon as you double the defiant, then I think you've got a really good fight there because then you have that it can't concentrate far enough. The torpedoes, like you say, the quantum's can't have enough. Like it can't fire on multiple ships with the same yield. So that I think would be a really interesting fight. And then mm. just double double the firepower. That might be it. Actually, yeah. That's, okay, one more poll, guys. <laughs> 120 votes, which would win a space battle defiant? 33%, Enterprise E, 67%. Five more minutes, because I'm intrigued what you guys think. No, we found it dead like a bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Martin says the Def Enterprise East saved the Defiant Sass in first contact. Yeah, because the fucking Defiant had been fighting for like five hours. No, like 20. And the it, was, it was like a full day. Yeah. It was insane. And the Enterprise flies in and goes, hi. Yeah, yeah, we're going to finish Our shields are full, off. don't worry. <laughs> yeah, shields are full. We're fully loaded. We're fine. The Defiant's like, uh, <laughs> get me out of here. Yeah, they... yeah that's, that's not a fair, that's not worth even saying, Martin. Sorry. No, I mean, we'd, we'd had a great debate about that once where you can see other ships getting blown apart in one shot and yet the Defiant lasted all of those ships, outlasted. So it lasted like a hundred ships worth of battle. And the ball cube can multi-fire constantly, so it's being hit the entire time. Obviously, it's damaged. So it's it's surviving a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those toughest ships. That said, uh, you know, every ship's a bug to the ball cube, so they're not necessarily going to prioritize any ship over the other. I wouldn't think. Yeah. I wouldn't think the Borg necessarily think like that. Okay, so this is the last poll, guys. See if it can whatever. Who do a space battle enterprise E or two defiant classes? That's an interesting mm. debate. I want to get a hundred people. Thanks, Aaron. General Grievous, two dollars. Lakota handed defiant its butt. Enterprise E all day. It did not. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. And besides, that it's like refitting a turd versus 
a brand spanking new car, you know, not a turd obviously, but refitting an old E versus a brand new E. So Mission Man says, so what are you saying is that the E would have finished the cube in a few minutes, whereas the fleet took all day? No, the Enterprise, <laughs> no, it's not what he's saying at all. Not at all. It would equally have lost against the cube. None of those ships went against the cube. That's the point. It took a, a Picard exclusive strategy to defeat the cube after already having been damaged for 40 hours. Uh, no, no, no ships can take on a cube one on one or two on one or ten on one or a hundred on one. We've seen it twice. It, it's, it, it's lucky because if they sent more than one cube, they'd be screwed. <laughs> Very lucky because, boy, wouldn't take much. I am me. C throws in five dollars. Thank you. How long would the Defiant last against the Scimitar? Ooh, that's... They both have cloaks, so... One can fire while cloaked, though. But I feel like the Defiant could dodge most of the Scimitar's weapons. What do you think? I would say so. I would say so, too. That's a really hard one. Because if it... Because the E is trying to keep up. Remember, keep up, old man. Whereas the Defiant's going to keep dodging, keep firing pulse phases at the ship. Yeah, I think the Defiant would have a really good time of that. The Defiant would be doing a lot of this. Yeah, actually, because yeah. that's a unique. That's a that's a that's a that's a shark versus a, a sniper rifle. It's like <laughs> it's a different sort of equation. That that's an interesting battle. I've never. Mm. And I'm not sure the Defiant would win, but did the E get any quantum's on the? I don't think it did. I think it missed all the quantums so we never saw like full proper punishing yeah. or maybe maybe it did maybe that last couple but if it i mean as soon as the defiant gets a few well impulse phaser blasts and quantums i mean this can do a lot of damage very quickly and sometimes will just yeah that's a really good one yeah mm. Mm. but mm. yeah this joko you're right i wasn't trying to disable that it's true hmm Darth Crashalot throws in five dollars. Uh, one Akira and two Defiance. The Romulans ha had you ch had you chase. One Akira and two Defiance. The Romulans had you chase. What? I think he's talking about when one Akira and two Defiance, the, the Federation sent against three to Derodexes mm. in Prometheus. Although they didn't know there's we three to Derodexes, so it was just they thought two Defiance one. Akira was need to take down the Prometheus. The Prometheus. Which yeah. is a pretty bold statement. <laughs> Jeez. General Grievous, two dollars. Sam's Sam words defiant got whipped by a polished turd. Yes. Dear me. Oh, we got hundred votes. So there we go, Stuart. I got you the I got the defiant win. Just took two of them. <laughs> I think that's fair though. I think that's 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 a good that's interesting, though. Mm -hmm. I think I think two would win. I think you could you could argue that. Mm -hmm. that Absolutely. I mean, obviously, we won the vote. So, all right, Stuart. I think that's a successful set of. Oh yeah, to about the Archimedes as well. I got a successful poll live. <laughs> uh, yeah. Still want to get a hundred percent poll though. I know. Even the poll to get the whole poll didn't get a poll because people said no. The realists. Oh no, Nightbringer, Stuart, ten o births versus one sovereign. Oh no. Ten o births versus one. Sovereign. <laughs> I mean, really, it's just ten torpedoes of the ten o births. Who wins? You know who wins. <laughs> ah. Yeah. All right, Stuart, you done? Are we doing the poll? I'm done. I did a poll. Maybe they'll get a hundred percent before we finish out. Because we're closing it now. But General Grievous has the last Super Chat slot. Fantastic. So... <laughs> Good. See, fuck, people are assholes. No, wait for them to queue up. It doesn't matter. They I can't. I... It can never be 100% now. Unless, unless we can, you know, make them realize their mistake. I think, yeah, we're still our best. You can't still... take it back either, I don't think, your vote. Oh, can okay, you not? I think you can swap it. I think you can swap between the two. Well, let me go vote for you, Stuart. I'll just add my vote to the, Need whole, to find a the public one. 
You do that. There you go. Okay, you can't take it back. <laughs> General Grievous, two dollars. No torpedoes, just a zero elevation phaser sweep. Oh. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, so General Grievous is twice over the last super chat slot champion. Oh, and Squadron Course kicks hey. his ass with a dollar. Good job, Squadron Course. Nice. So until Wednesday, probably. Uh, I believe on Friday we're going to do a predictions video for Lower Deck Season 3. I do use thoughts there, brain. Um, so we'll uh, we'll probably see you on Wednesday. See if, you, haven't got, you haven't got predictions anymore, Stuart, so you might have Thursday off in the gear. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see you soon. Please enjoy the rest of the week's content. Obviously, you go back and look at the Archimedes Bridge Interior right down to date which is quite interesting the uh the, the it's not quite as kibashi and yet more kibashi it's very confusing and of course videos all week long please enjoy from us and of course spread the trick word if you can chris parnell one pound every okay. 51 five dollars ten over earth versus a sovereign sovereign destroys one over earth the rest explode <laughs> the stormtroopers or the the red shirts of the fleet yeah general grievous one dollar Thank you. Thanks, guys. Sweet. So until next time, he is Captain Foley. I am. And he's Commander Cockings. I am. Bye, guys.